Yo, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to the Boss Coin YouTube channel. Today we're gonna to get back to the basics of blockchain with a mining pool video. And what I'm gonna do in today's video is I'm just gonna simply explain to you the basic functions of a mining pool. A little bit about the basics of simply cryptocurrency mining, but what a mining pool is, why we have them, what their function is, what are the benefits. We're gonna talk about you know what specific terms mean as well as go over payout schemes. For example, have you seen PPS or PPLNS? What do those acronyms stand for? What's the difference? And what is the best mining pool for you to choose? What's the most profitable? Because at the end of the day, it's all about maximizing the coins that you're mining as well as efficiency. But anyway, let's go ahead and jump into today's video. But right before we do that, 10 seconds of tails. To kick it off, let's cover the basics thanks to a great article by Luxor. So first off, a block reward. What is that? Why does it matter? Why do you care? Well, it's all about the block reward because the block reward simply refers to the new coins distributed by the network of miners for each successfully solved block. For example, right now in Bitcoin, every time a block reward is solved, 12.5 BTC is awarded to the miners. In addition to network fees, but we're gonna talk about that a little bit later. Uh, why put off tomorrow we can do today? So the network fees, so every time you send Bitcoin, for example, you know, you get that little transaction fee, that network fee. Okay, well, that's a network fee. And all of those fees go back to the miner. So say the 12.5 Bitcoin comes from that block reward as it does every time until the next Bitcoin block having, which I'll explain what that is here in a second. But for all of those fees that you pay, those all go back to the miners. So even when there's no more Bitcoin to be mined, it'll still be profitable, or I should technically say, there will still be coins to be earned by mining forever because that is where those network fee goes. Those network fees go back to the miners. As far as explaining the block reward halving, a block reward halving happens in Bitcoin about every four years or technically every 210,000 blocks because this is a blockchain, it's not time-based. The next block reward having is in 156 days from the date of this video being shot. At that point, every time a Bitcoin block is halved, instead of 12.5 coins being awarded to the miners, 6.25 because it's cut in half. And then when that's halved, it'll go down further. And this is all down from an initial block reward of 50 Bitcoin. So it's significantly reduced from its initial award amount. And now back to the basic mining terms. Next, we've got hashing power. A hash is simply the output of a hash function. Hash rate is the speed at which a computer is completing an operation in the cryptocurrency's code. The SHA-256, which is the mining algorithm for Bitcoin based off of Hashcash, is what basically defines that hashing function. To put that in a simple term, these computer devices are looking for a specific number combination and they're running a bunch of computations to basically get there. Eventually, one of them figures it out and then they win or solve the block, which we'll touch on a little bit more here. Hashes are measured in hashes per second. A higher hash rate increases a miner's opportunity for finding the next block and receiving the block reward. Briefly, before we continue, I wanna to touch on just the basic miners that are out there. You have CPU miners, which is just a CPU in any computer. This is how mining began, and Bitcoin was originally mined on CPUs. And then people figured out how to mine them with GPUs, graphics cards, things commonly used for gaming or high computer processes like video editing. There are still GPU mineable coins out there, but Bitcoin is no longer GPU mined. And I'll explain why. Because there's a device that is even more powerful than a GPU for mining. It's called an ASIC miner, application specific integrated circuit miner. It's a purpose built device. This machine, for example, this one, literally all it does is mine Bitcoin. You turn it on, it mines Bitcoin, can't do anything else. All it can do is mine that one specific mining algorithm. For example, again on Bitcoin, that's SHA-256. There are a couple other types of mining, such as hard drive mining and FPGA mining. Hard drive mining is exactly what it sounds like. You're using hard drive space on your computer and basically mining with it, and a very simple explanation of that. And then there's FPGA mining, field programmable gate array. This is kind of like a GPU on steroids or a more versatile but less powerful ASIC miner to explain that quickly and simply. 
those are the main types of miners that are available here today. Every cryptocurrency that is called proof of work is a mineable cryptocurrency that has some sort of mining function. Aside from proof of work mineable cryptocurrencies, there's also cryptocurrencies out there that are called proof of stake or use some other sort of block consensus mechanism. Basically what that means is that they operate and move their blockchain in a different way that does not involve mining devices. A common argument is that those blockchains are fundamentally less secure than proof of work blockchains but that's debatable and not for today's video. And let's get back to the terms. So let's talk about luck. Imagine that each miner is given a lottery ticket for a certain amount of hashing power they provide. If you were to provide one terahash of hashing power and the overall hashing power in the network is 10 terahash, so you've got 10% of the hashing power, you would have one out of 10 total lottery tickets and probability to solve the block, re block reward and thus get the reward. So that again, that's 10%. And for every 10 blocks found, you should statistically find one of them. If you've ever seen luck on a pool and luck variants, basically it's possible for you to find two out of the next 10 blocks. That means you would be lucky. It's also possible that you would find none out of the next 10 blocks because it's not guaranteed. It's all statistics and probability. And while you have a 10% chance, it does not mean that you're going to hit one out of 10 every time. Speaking of luck, that's one of the main reasons why mining pools came about because it decreases that variance, that luck factor. If you are one of 1,000 miners and you pool all your hash together, you're more likely to hit blocks and you're more likely to get consistent revenue. If you don't do that and you are just one person with one miner out of 1,000 and other people have 10, 20, 50, 500, they're going to be finding many more blocks much more consistently than you. So it's a basic powers and number. You're trading luck and variance for stability. And sometimes depending on the network, it's nearly impossible for you to find a block reward. Like if you were just to go buy one Bitcoin miner right now, you may never ever find a block with that miner. But if you did, it would be equivalent to like winning the lottery. And you'd be a profitable man that day, lucky man. There's two very popular payout functions. PPS and PPLNS. Almost every mining pool today you will see using one of these functions unless you're trying to solo mine, which we briefly just talked about, but I'll talk about that a little bit more here later in the video. So PPS, pay per share. PPS was originally offered by Bitpenny and it offers a flat payout for each share or hash function that is saw. Per Luxor's words and bringing it back to the lottery example, imagine that a miner submits one lottery share to the pool operator. Even if the pool doesn't win the lottery, the miner will get paid 10% of the block reward if there are 10 total tickets. What that system ultimately does is it takes the luck and the variance out of the miner's payout and the pool operator absorbs all of the risk of the variance. Basically, very simply, this is easy to explain. For every share you submit to the mining pool, you're gonna get paid and compensated. They're small, minute amounts, but they very rapidly add up. You have no luck or variance factor. Doesn't matter if the mining pool finds a block at all because you're getting paid on your shares, not on blocks. Contrasting that with the next most popular option, pay per last and shares, PPLNS. This offers payment to miners as a percent of the shares that they contribute to the total shares. You get paid out once a block is actually found. Using the lottery example, if you commit one ticket and there's a total of 10 tickets in the pool, your payout will be 10% once the, once the pool finds a block. So if the pool finds no blocks, you don't get paid. And if the pool finds a couple blocks and it's you know lucky for the short term period, then you would basically get paid extra and earn extra. But if you look at just long term statistics and viability there, eventually you sh like statistically the mining pool should even out to more or less a hundred percent payout so you could get unlucky or lucky in the short term which would mean that you're earning a little bit higher or a little bit lower again in the short term both of the most popular payout schemes are good that's why they're the most popular payout schemes personally i actually kind of prefer pps when it's relevant the mining pool takes a higher risk and 
Well, not being a mining pool operator, that's simply not my problem. I hate to sound mean when it comes to that, but that's that. For every share I submit, I'm getting instant payout. It's easier to evaluate my earnings, to monitor my earnings, and every day I'm gonna get you know a consistent payout there. PPLNS is still a great payout option. We use it all the time. Depending on the mining pool, we may have to use it. And it's awesome when the pool gets lucky and you're like really happy and your earnings are high, but it seems like just as often, if not more, than that happens, which statistically would make no sense, that the pool is unlucky, so your earnings are a little bit below average. So being in crypto where it's already stressful, I like to see the variance taken out when possible. Let's take a quick stroll down memory lane, slush pool. They created the world's first mining pool. This is a Bitcoin talk thread from 2010. How cool is that? 2010. That's like 10 years ago. <laughs> I mean, really, it's actually nine, but whatever. Sounds cooler when you say a decade. And right here, they're making the argument of basically you're going to get stable income to their thanks to their significant network share, which means they're going to consistently hit Bitcoin blocks unless you'll consistently get paid. You're also getting web access where you can monitor your miners. And that's interesting. You get advanced security with 2FA and things like that. So very quickly, the first mining pool was actually a pretty advanced one offering a secure benefit to use. Super cool, and they're still around today, which uh, really just speaks to their success. One of the biggest downsides to a mining pool is that yes, like there is a fee for that, normally between like one or sometimes zero actually, to like 5%. That can be a high piece of your earnings when you're already paying fees in many other places like in your mining programs potentially or on cryptocurrency exchanges and everywhere else in this world that constantly has fees for you again the big upside is though you don't have to worry about setting this up or the complicated parts you just you get the mining pool information you punch it in and you're up to speed mining so at the end of the day mining pools are not going away and you really just want to find a good one that works for you and you enjoy. If you want to do research about mining pools, miningpoolstats.stream and link down in the video description below like everything we talk about in today's video is a great tool and resource. So say like you're really keen to start mining Ethereum, right? Well, we can click on Ethereum here and it'll show us the top mining pools by hash rate, what their fees are, what payout scheme that they use, and you know quickly get up to speed and access that information say you want to mine a smaller up-and-coming coin it's it's here they, they have everything added so we have like nervo ckb we've been talking about mining that a lot this year you know, quickly get an instant readout of what's going on who's finding the blocks quick distribution to see the blocks mined there's some mining pools out there that offer some unique things that just simply aren't common for example luck pool they have a minor jackpot so when you find the block reward you get an additional additional income bonus. This is really cool and exciting when you find a block reward and it's not as risky as say solo mining where if you don't find a reward you don't have any earnings. So if you don't find the block reward you still get a cut of the earnings. But here's the downside. For everyone that gets a bonus that's people that also make less money. So while it's exciting to get the bonus you're also consistently normally earning less compared to other pools who do not have a bonus scheme in place. Personally though, I think it's a fun and exciting feature and kind of gamifies the blockchain. There's also some mining pools out there that they have pool implementations. So right here, we've got this coin and you just mine to the pool like normal. And then they also have solo implementations. So you can mine solo on a pool. So basically that means you don't have to set up the node. You don't have to do any of the back end when it comes to setting up you know, the mining function. And you can just simply connect to their stratum. So if we come over here and we do the connect right here, you can just take this information and you will be able to connect to their mining pool and mine with just your rigs. In exchange for that, you pay a low, low percent fee. Before I wrap up today's video with the conclusion, I also want to thank today's video sponsor because without sponsors like this, this channel would not be possible. EMC.io. They are a very interesting mining pool that's very well developed. You can use our referral link if you want to or you don't have to, but it's always appreciated when you do. That's in the video description below. And once you sign up, you will get access to their dashboard. 
with their mining pool you can mine Bitcoin or Litecoin and what they do is they take your hash power and they distribute it where they find it to be the most profitable currently so say Bitcoin cash BCH has a huge price rise then they're gonna move the miners over there where it's more profitable and convert it back to Bitcoin and you will be paid out daily in Bitcoin they also have their own firmware which is pretty cool to see and statistically it's pretty effective so you take the factory firmware they're saying that the minimal hash rate is 10 terahash a second and the maximum hash rate is 16 terahash a second and when you compare these electric consumptions you're reducing your power consumption by about 200 watts or you're increasing it by about a hundred and if you're reducing it you're getting a higher hash rate than the lower hash rate on the factory firmware. And if you are increasing it slightly, you're gonna need two tera hash bump and you're, it's gonna be a sliding scale of overclocking where you can put it anywhere in between there. The downside of their firmware is there is a small fee in there, but it does have ASIC antivirus. They will give you support and you do get those advanced overclocking functions in addition to lower power consumption, which could hopefully make up for that fee that you're paying and they boast a higher stability. Their firmware is available for a lot of devices from the m S9, L3+, Plus, T9+, Plus, S17, and the T17. So basically, the most popular amp miner, Bitcoin miners, as well as the L3+, Plus, which is the most popular publicly released, which is not the most powerful, uh, Litecoin miner, but the most powerful publicly released Litecoin miner. Getting set up and connected with EMCD is a breeze. They have servers all over the world from Russia, Europe to China, USA, and a few other places. And all you have to do is click where you want to go. For example, I'm in the US, so I'd be going to USA. I'd grab the stratum and then it even gives you your um, username dot worker name and it says you don't, you, any password will work. Put that into your miner and you will get up to speed mining on their mining pool. So that's that guys. That's the basics of blockchain when it comes to mining pool. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Basically, if you want my final thoughts on it, is that I use mining pools all the time, and you probably do too if you're watching this. And if you're still new and completely new and learning mining, well, you're going to end up on mining pools. It's the easiest way to start, super convenient, and sometimes it's the only way. If unless you're very technically competent, you're going to be on mining pools, and that's okay. There's a lot of things to learn when it comes to crypto, and especially crypto mining. And outsourcing this rather technical and intensive part for just a small percent fee is most often gonna be your best choice. As far as payout schemes, I talked about them earlier. There's other payout schemes that we didn't touch on in this video, but to be honest, they're not very popular. They're not very common. And personally, I would recommend staying away from them normally unless something new and great, some kind of breakthrough comes out after this video going live, which to be honest is just very unlikely mining has been around for about 10 years now and these are going to be the most popular polished developed and just well received mining algorithms people are using them because they like them they trust them and they simply work so as always i hope you guys enjoyed today's video if you did please make sure to hit thumbs up on the video subscribe to the boss coin youtube channel leave a comment below let me know what you thought and i'll see y'all i freaking stuttered i'll see you guys next time thanks for watching I